Aaron is annoying. Teddy's voice is putting her own face to sleep. And Kyle did this to her hair. Not just now, but it looks like at the reunion. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today I'm covering Season 10, Episode 16, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Denise and Desist. And if I sound a little happier, well, that's because I'm okay with the season ending. I am kind of looking forward to the reunion yet, though. So let's get into it. So let's get this out of the way. Kyle sucks. She sucks so bad. I really hope this is her last season with us. We see her putting her stuff in Sutton's store. And it just cracks me up because I, they both spend so much money to look so stupid. Ugh. The evidence is coming later. Just wait for it. Uh, so we see Kev, uh, Kyle putting out her stuff and she's directing and yeah, okay. So we go over to Garcelle. Garcelle is excitedly pitching her new movie, Split Marriage. She's finding a director for it. Or sounds like she found a director for it. So I went on IMDb to see if there's any information yet. There's not, unfortunately. We just get this little picture here and it says it's in development. So I will be looking out for that. We see Dorit and PK's house. They are all decked out for Christmas and holy cow, I don't know why, but this cracked me up that Dorit and PK have this giant nutcracker as soon as you just go, this looks like it should be in Dorinda's house. This, I wouldn't imagine this at PK and Dorit's house. So they're doing a walk through getting ready for the party. I had to show you, I know it's kind of blurry here, but look at this door. I don't know why, I'm kind of obsessed with that front door. It's crazy, it's big, it makes no sense, but I kind of love it. Tell me your thoughts below. What the hell is happening here with this sleigh and this jester? Jester, jester, jester. Uh, it's just crazy. Uh, so PK and Dorit are planning a home, welcome, uh, a home party. <laughs> <laughs> but they're also launching PK's non-alcoholic champagne. So let me just tell you, I did a deep dive here to see if I could find any information about this champagne. Nothing, nada, couldn't find anything online. Uh, the only thing I found was by Bravo TV and it was literally saying he's working on it, but no, no other information. It seems like, and this is just my thought, I would think you'd want to get the information out online so that way your customers or the people like us that are interested, that are Googling it, would at least be able to see the product. So, who knows? So guys, I love this. The editors decide to flash back to the scene between Rinna and Dorit, and uh, this is my favorite. I actually referenced this picture in an earlier episode of the season. This just makes me laugh so hard. Why? I'm sorry, but look at Dorit's boobs. What the heck is going on there? This girl is a stick figure. Obviously, we know she has big fake boobies, but what are we looking at? They look crazy. <laughs> sorry, I wouldn't normally talk about that, but this just this makes me laugh. And the fact that they use this picture of all is even funnier here. So it's Dorit talking to PK. She's telling PK about the baby shower and she's telling him, let me finish. This seems to be a theme with, with her. PK says, don't bring me into it. I'm not interested unless they're attacking you. Dorit says, it's the first time in a long time. It's not about me. I thought that was pretty good. I really like Dorit. I've always liked Dorit. I like her this season. She's good. And then we see these two assholes. Seriously? Oh my gosh. I just can't with these two. I hope to God that they're gone this next season. Ugh. I just... Is it weird that I'm already, like, thinking I don't want to hate watch this anymore? Uh, so they're FaceTiming Erica. Erica's in New York. Rena's saying, I'm torn, thinking she hasn't been a great friend for Denise. But you know what? Maybe I have been a good friend. She's going to have to take responsibility for it. For what? Oh, Rena, you're such an asshole. Seriously, are we still talking about this? This is ridiculous. I know fans have been going crazy online, and I just, I hope that Denise just tears them a new one at the reunion. Um, again, Teddy, you're so fucking boring. Your voice is putting your face to sleep. That's crazy. 
So then we have the ladies getting ready for the party and we see a very uncomfortable scene here. I am not going after Teddy's kids. I can't stand Teddy. I'll never attack anybody's kids. The one, I, the thing I wanna point out here is this poor little girl is calling her sleeves fat. And I'm not trying to jump on the hate train here, but I'm going to and say, uh, she learned that from Teddy. Teddy is just such a control freak and I do believe that she would talk to the little girl about things like fat, things you wouldn't talk to kids about. Uh, and uh, we can see it here. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. It was awkward, cringy, moving on. So it's the night of PK and Dorit's. Here's the setup for the champagne, non-alcoholic champagne that he's launching. And I know, I'm not a big drinker myself. I actually thought this looked pretty good, but I know, I know a lot of people were not into it. Um, again, I tried to look online to see if I could find any information, nothing yet. But believe me, if I ever see it nearby, I'd try it. Uh, so then we see Dorit. Dorit, I just love Dorit. I think she looks gorgeous. This is a crazy ass dress, reminiscent of that Elizabeth Hurley dress. You know, the one with the big safety pins. Uh, she looks gorgeous, but literally only Dorit can pull this off. Seriously, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't even wanna think about what the hell I'd look like in this dress. So then we see her with this guy who's setting up the candles. He introduced himself as the pyro guy. Uh, she made a funny face at the end that made me laugh. This guy tripped me up. I just got this picture and it made me laugh so hard. I don't, I want to be friends with this guy. I don't know what his deal is. Uh, I want to make a joke that he looks like a magician, but they actually do have a magician at the party later. So all I could think of is the guy from Harry Potter. <laughs> Moving on. So the ladies arrive at the party and of course Kyle, who is already so annoying, decides, how can I up my annoying game? Oh, I know, I'll bring Faye. She brings Faye to the party. Then we see Adrienne Maloof arrive and if you look to her left, I believe the guys at Watch What Crappen said that that is Marisol Patton. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back and watch Real Housewives of Miami. I love that show. I would totally do a rewatch if you guys wanted to watch that because I am into it. Uh, it's such a good show, Real Housewives of Miami. Unfortunately, it's on for, what, three seasons, maybe four? I can't remember. But um, yeah, so anyway, so I believe that's her. Haven't gotten it confirmed. Tried to Google it, couldn't find it. Moving on. Can we just talk about Sutton for a second? I like Sutton, actually. I think she's nutty. I mean, she's like a nutty rich aunt. I don't know how to explain her. I do not understand. I, I said it earlier. What, how can you spend so much money to look so stupid? I don't understand it. I really don't. What is this outfit? Oh, it's just like doilies or something. I'm sure it costs more than my house, but I don't understand it. Oh goodness, okay. So we have Garcelle and her very handsome man, Michael, and they're talking, they're talking about their relationship. Uh, she starts kind of making jokes about having a diamond. Unfortunately, of course, we find out that they didn't work out and that sucks. So I won't spend too much time here, but eh. we also find out that she didn't have sex for seven years after her divorce. And I say, what? Oh, I feel so bad for her. That sucks. She's such a gorgeous woman. You'd think that like people, guys, girls, everybody would be knocking at her door. Eh, she's just not into it. So anyway, so they're waiting for Denise and I feel so bad here. I, you know, okay. I caught flack before for criticizing Denise. You know, I love Denise. I'm team Denise. I love her so much and herself so much more than the other assholes that are on this show but I don't love this I don't love that she made Garcelle wait that sucks and then she stood her up and she stands her up again later and that sucks so I just I don't know I felt bad they're missing out on the party they're hanging out and talking but that you know they're waiting with no word from Denise who they were supposed to pick up so we go back to the party here and Dorit is trying to give a speech at her housewarming and little Phoenix here <laughs> is saying, why are you being so loud? And I kind of love that kid. I thought that was really funny. And then she says, whisper. 
Uh, and then we see this illusionist slash mentalist. I have no idea what his deal is. Probably should have Googled it, but I, I don't know. He was as creepy as all hell. I don't understand him. I don't know what the point of having him there was. But, um, of course, they he picks Teddy. Oh, Teddy. Oh, my gosh. Seriously, could he, like, ma magically give her a personality? <laughs> Like, of all people. So he makes her ring disappear, yada, yada, yada. That's when Garcelle and Michael arrive um, after waiting for Denise. They don't hear anything, so they show up to the party. So she tells the ladies that Denise was a no-show, that they're supposed to pick her up. She didn't show up. Rena's like, this is strange. I've been reaching out to Denise, to Denise saying, you really should be here tonight. Rena then shows texts that they've exchanged back and forth and about what they were wearing, that sort of thing. Dorit and Rena are talking about it. Garcelle saying she stood her up. I'm sure Denise has her reasons for not showing. Just be upfront with me. Respect me. If you can't be upfront with me, why do I value our friendship more than you value our friendship? And to that, I say, Garcelle, you have an excellent point. I like Denise. I'm team Denise, but I thought that was pretty crappy. Uh, so Garcelle says she thought Brandy was going to be here. And then she asks, is Brandy going to be here? Dorit says, no, of course not. I'm not even friends with Brandy. Dun, dun, dun. So can we imagine what the heck happens next? <gasps> Brandy shows up. You know what? Fuck you, Kyle. <laughs> Sorry for the language, but seriously, fuck you, Kyle. Brandy shows up because of Kyle. They're saying she's Kim's plus one, but no, Kyle orchestrated this. Come on. Uh, Brandy... Seriously, what is this outfit? What are you wearing? What did you do to your face? And what face is this lady making behind you? Because that's so funny. So we see this crazy face. I mean, Brandy <laughs> at the party. Dorit reluctantly hugs her. I don't believe that Dorit invited her. I believe that she crashed. And I believe that Kyle knew she was going to crash. This is why Kyle's kind of running and hiding and playing with Kim's boobs. So we see Brandy talking to Sutton. This was really funny here because Sutton says, maybe one day you can learn not to say stuff, which I thought was a pretty good line. <laughs> Turns out they met years ago through a skin doctor, I believe. So maybe he's her source for the rumors between Brandy and Denise. And if so, that means Denise is, I'm uh, sorry. If so, that means Brandy has been running her mouth to the doctor. That doesn't shock me either. Fucking Kyle. So we go back to Brandy. She's sitting down with the ladies. Oh, oh Lisa Renna. This face, this whole shocked thing. And oh, just she oh, she's so annoying. I hope she goes. Garcelle says she wants to hear from Denise, not from Brandy. Brandy reveals that she sent a text to Denise saying, I'm going to see you tonight, and then says, it's no one else's business. Fuck off, Brandy. You're the one that made it everybody's business. You can't do that and then try to play the victim like, oh, it's nobody else's business. I can't believe they all know about us. That's so crazy. I love Garcelle's face here, by the way. Uh, so then <laughs> they all cheers. I don't know what the hell they're throwing in the pool here. And then we see a flash to 15 minutes later, and then we get a scene with the producer. He's saying, I don't know, did she respond to you? And Garcelle's saying she's heard nothing. And it's revealed that they got a text from Aaron saying there's a family emergency and Denise isn't coming. Well, no shit, especially now that we know that Brandy's texting her. She's probably freaked out. But it sucks. This is what I was talking about earlier. It sucks that she bailed on her friend Garcelle, who's been defending her. Then we see a flash to Monday, and it looks like it's Garcelle and Plastic Lady here and <laughs> Dorit. And I actually think Dorit looks gorgeous here. I love this color lipstick. I'm kind of jealous. So they're sitting around and talking. They're talking about Denise not showing. Dorit says she got a message following the party saying, sorry, I missed you talk soon. Garcelle says she got a message on Sunday saying, I didn't want you to have to lie for me. That's why I didn't call you. And they're, of course, talking about the family emergency lie that she told producers. Denise had texted Garcelle that she wanted to get together, 
Garcelle went to meet her. Oh, and I hate this. I hate this for Garcelle. Denise backs out. Now, what, why would she do that? That sucks because Garcelle has had her back and been on the team the whole time. And it's not like the other ladies were going to be there. They sh she should have met up with Garcelle. That's crap. I understand why she might not have wanted to go to Dorit's party. She should have met up with Garcelle one-on-one. -on -one. Aaron then posts a pic of Denise in the hospital with hernias. Apparently, it happened six months before, and Rena saying, It's a sympathy. Blah, blah. Um, it says, Oh, God, the queen of attention seeking. She's saying it makes her look like she can't show up to anything because she's recovering. And Garcelle asks if she really thinks it's for sympathy. sympathy. Rena says, She'll make us look like bad guys, all mean girls. Uh, Rena, you are a mean girl, and I love that she gets bent out of shape when people call her that. I think it's hilarious because all my hashtags have had mean girls in them. So then we find out that Denise sent cease and desist letters to the cast and producers. So I'm sure that'll come up at the reunion, obviously. We find out Jul January 8th, 2020. Ugh the dumpster fire that is 2020. We see Kyle calling Rena. Kyle says she's scared to show us who she is. Okay, Kyle, you're so deep. You know all this stuff. Okay, Kyle. Uh, two weeks later, we see Aaron and Denise. And Denise is, I just, I found this scene a little weird. She's saying, if you don't mind, I'm gonna stop by Rena's house on my way home. And I don't know, I just didn't love that. I, I, maybe I'm taking it too literally, but it seems like she's kind of asking for permission there. I didn't love that. But anyway, so she stops by Rena's and oh my gosh, Rena's such an asshole. We knew this, but she just like had to make it worse. So they're say, they start out okay. They say they miss each other. Rena's asking what they can do to move past this. But then immediately she does start with the mean girl thing. It's no wonder she's sensitive to, to being called that. She knows what she's doing. And Denise, you know, they're going back and forth. And Denise is saying, why would I engage with this? And Rena says, she brings up the cease and desist, says Denise wants the footage taken out. And Denise says, who told you that? Who told you that? And Rena's like, ooh, you're so angry. So angry. Rena, you're an asshole. If you're really pretending to be a friend to Denise, that's not how you talk to a friend. It's weird that Denise acted so shocked that Rena said that about the footage being taken out. Because I don't under I guess I don't understand that part. Why why is Denise shocked that Rena knew that? Wouldn't she understand that that was the ultimate goal? But regardless, I'm not getting hung up on that. I just thought it was such a shitty thing. Rena was just being like, oh, you're so angry. What if they did that back to Rena? She'd do that stupid ass single tear that she does to fake her way out of things and to try to get sympathy and attention. Uh, Denise says, you're playing dirty. This is slanderous. You wouldn't do the same thing if it was about you. And Rena talks about being honest. Rena says she's there for Denise. Bullshit. Then we go over to a private plane where we see Sutton has chartered for Kyle, Rena, and Teddy to go see Erica, who's, in, of course, on Broadway as Roxy Hart in Chicago. And Dorit's meeting them there. They go to meet up with Erica. They're taking pictures. And then we get the end of season credits on the screen that we always do. So let's go over them. Erica earned rave reviews for her performance on Broadway, but the show was shut down after two months do, due to the COVID outbreak. So she returned home to LA to be with Tom. Garcelle realized she wasn't too sweet on Chocolate Michael. She's on the hunt for someone spicier. February 25th, Teddy gave birth to a baby girl named Dove. I'm sorry, can I just say, even that name is kind of annoying. Uh, she still finds time to burn off the baby weight. I'm sure she does. Kyle's fashion line is being sold online. Her loungewear is selling through the roof during quarantine. To which I say, who is buying that? That's awful. I hate that. Uh, Bold and Beautiful was one of the first shows to restart production. Because of health protocols, Aaron has been a stand-in for Denise's love scenes. 
Look at how fake Rena is here. If you don't think she's fake, just look at this facial expression right here and tell me that's not completely fake. With Harry home from the East Coast, Lisa's return to her one true passion. Dancing on Instagram. <laughs> Actually, I love that. I love that from the editors because they're saying like, well, you know, what else does she have? Fake bitch. Uh, <laughs> sorry. And then we have Dorit. Dorit is saying, although her Capri room is closed during the COVID, Dorit's Kitchen is open for Phoenix's new cooking show. And that's so cute. I tried to Google to see where her cooking show is. It's just something Dorit posts on her Instagram. And it's super cute. Sometimes she has Jagger on there too. Super cute. And that is it for the episode. So what do you guys think? I'm glad that the season is over. I'm very excited for the reunion. Although I'm sure I'll be pissed at the time. Dying to know your thoughts on this one. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I love talking to you guys. And I cover New York. I cover Potomac. If you're not on it, get on it. It's so good. I'm covering Below Deck Med, which is so <laughs> aggravating. And I just appreciate everything you guys are saying in the comments and all the support. I really do. Find me on Twitter at Real Recaps. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great night. Bye-bye.